All right, students, welcome to our latest installment of Chapter 3's discussion on stoichiometry and calculations with formulas and equations. This is such an important and mind-numbing topic, but I highly encourage you guys to work hard and get these principles down because they are essential for being able to progress in the rest of your chemistry and science careers. In typical Mike style, I want to begin first by showing you a humorous cat of the day from quickmeme.com. The name is Bond. Molecular Bond. All right, we'll continue. After today's lecture, you should be able to calculate a compound's empirical formula from percent mass, convert empirical formula to molecular formula, use balanced chemical equations to calculate the amounts of reactants and products, calculate the amount of a product formed from a limiting reactant, and last, calculate percent yield. So we'll go ahead and vault into our first topic, calculating empirical formulas from percent mass. Before we get into these steps, I want to tell you, I'm going to read the steps to you, and I promise they're going to be slightly confusing and bewildering, but please wait, get through them, and watch the examples that I'll do afterwards in which I'll show you how to actually execute these steps, because then I hope and believe it will become much more clear. Step one, convert the data you're given to grams for each element. Now, if you're given a percentage for each element, then just change the units from percentages to grams. Two. Convert grams of each element to moles by dividing each of the amounts that you calculated step one by the atomic mass of each element. Three, divide each value you got in step two by the smallest number you got in step two, and then round all the answers to the nearest whole number or simple decimal point or fraction. Four, if you have any fractions, multiply by whatever you need to to every single number to convert them to nice, neat whole numbers. And step five, you're done. The resulting values are the subscripts in your empirical formula. We'll now take a look at a lecture problem to see if we can get this down. Determine the empirical formulas of the compounds with the following mass compositions. Now I'm going to go ahead and do two of these for you and let you tackle the third on your own. First example says, we've got mass composition 10.4% carbon, 27.8% sulfur, and 61.7% chlorine. What's the empirical formula? We go through our steps. Step one. Convert everything you're given into grams. If you're given percents, just change the percent sign into grams straight across. So we're going to assume that if we had a 100 gram sample, 10.4 grams would be carbon, 27.8 grams would be sulfur, and 61.7 grams would be chlorine. Step two, convert grams of each element to moles by dividing by the atomic mass of each element. So here's what we do. I've got 10.4 grams of carbon. What is carbon's atomic mass? It's around 12. So if I take 10.4 divided by 12, I get 0.866. 27.8 grams of sulfur. Sulfur's atomic mass is 32. I take 27.8 divided by 32, and I get 0.866. 61.7 grams of chlorine. Chlorine's atomic mass is roughly 35. 61.7 divided by 35 is 1.76. Congratulations, we're done with step two. Step three, divide all of the answers that we just got by whichever one is the smallest, and around to the nearest whole number. You'll note that I've got 0 0.866, 0 0.866, and 1.76. Which of those three values is the smallest? Well, obviously, these two tie, 0 0.866. So what I'm going to do is, for carbon, take 0 0.866, divide it by itself, and we get 1. For sulfur, I get the same. And for chlorine, 1.76 divided by 0 0.866, I get 2. Step four. If I have any fractions after the last step, I multiply them all by whatever I need to to get nice neat whole numbers. Let's look back at this. I've got 1 and 1 and 2. Are any of these guys fractions or decimals? Absolutely not. Which means that this is not applicable for this particular problem. Step 5. The resulting mole values are the subscripts in the empirical formula. So I got carbon as being 1, sulfur is 1, and chlorine is 2. So the final empirical formula is C1S1Cl2, or CSCl2. Does that make sense? <laughs> I hope so. If not, take a look at the next problem. We've now been given a percent mass composition of 35.82% carbon, 7.46% hydrogen, 35.82% oxygen, and 20.90% nitrogen. What's the empirical formula? Step one, convert everything to grams. So all I really have to do is just take the percent signs and replace them with grams. So if I had a 100 gram sample, I'd assume 35.82 grams of carbon, 7.46 grams of hydrogen, 35.82 grams of oxygen, and 20.90 grams of nitrogen. We're done with step one. Step two, convert these numbers 
by dividing every single one of them by the individual atomic mass for its corresponding element. 35.82 divided by the atomic mass of carbon is 2.985. 7.46 divided by the atomic mass of hydrogen, which is 1, is 7.46. 35.82 divided by 16, the atomic mass of oxygen is 2.239. And 20.90 divided by 14, the atomic mass of nitrogen is 1.493. Congratulations, we're done with step two. Step three, divide each value from step two by whichever of those values was the smallest. So we'll go back. Look at all these numbers. Which of these guys is the smallest? Well, you'll notice that 1.493 is the smallest, which means that in order to do step three, I'm going to divide each one of these by 1.493. Let's go ahead and show that. 2.985 divided by 1.493 gives really close to 2, and I just round it. 7.463 divided by the same gives me 5. 2.239 divided by 1.493 gives me 1.5. And 1.493 divided by itself gives me 1. Step 4 is if we have any fractions or decimals after step 3, we multiply them all by whatever we need to to convert them into nice, neat whole numbers. So up to this point, our formula is C2, and this 2 has come from up here. H5, and this 5 has come from up here. O1.5, which came from here, and N1. Now you note that it's absolutely ridiculous to have a formula where you have O1.5. So what in the world can we do to fix that? We multiply every one of these subscripts by 2. The final empirical formula is C4H10O3 N2. Step 5 is you're done. Any questions? Good. I'll let you have it. The problem sets I'll give you on your own. Which brings us to the next topic. How do we convert empirical formulas to molecular formulas? Now you might remember from our earlier discussion of empirical formulas in our previous chapter, they're not necessarily the same as the actual formula of a molecule. What they are is we've taken each of the subscripts in the molecular formula and reduced them to the most commonly divisible whole number. So how do we go backwards? That's the magical question. Don't worry, there are steps. Step one. Calculate the molecular weight of the empirical formula that we're given, and we're always given one in a problem. Step two, divide the molar mass that we're given, also comes in our problem, by the number we got in step one, and round that to the nearest whole number. And step three, multiply the subscript of each element in our empirical formula by the whole number we got in step two. That is now the molecular formula. Confused? Don't worry. I'll show you an example. This problem, I'm asked, what is the molecular formula of each of the following compounds? A is a compound whose empirical formula is CH2 and molar mass is 84 grams per mole. And B, empirical formula HCO2 and molar mass is 90 grams per mole. Now, I'm not going to do A for you. I'll let you tackle it on your own, but I will do part B as follows. Remember, step one, calculate the molecular weight of the empirical formula we're given. Our empirical, formu our empirical formula is HCO2. What is its molecular weight? Well, hydrogen weighs 1, carbon weighs 12, and O2 weighs 32, because each oxygen weighs 16, and there are two of them. 1 plus 12 plus 32 equals 45. Step 2, divide the molar mass that we're given in the problem by the number we just got in step 1. Round it to the nearest whole number. So the molar mass given in our problem is 90. The amount we just calculated in step 1 is 45. So if I take 90 and divide it by 45, I get a nice neat number. Two. Step three, multiply the subscript for each element by the whole number we got in step two. Here's the original formula we're given. The whole number we got in our last step was two, so I multiply every single subscript by two and I get H2, C2, O4. That is the actual molecular formula for this compound. Now, I think that'll be a wonderful place for us to stop, but I want you to stay tuned for our next lecture, which we will tackle the conversion of amounts of reactants to products, calculating theoretical yields and percent yields. Till then, have an enjoyable rest of your day.